Okay, uh, I want to show you guys how we can use blending modes practically now. Some things that we can do that are going to make blending modes work for us. Now, I'm going to go fairly quickly through this because uh, I don't want this video to get too terribly long. And you do have step by step instructions, and of course, you can rewind and uh, replay this video as you need. Uh, here I have a photograph. It's just a really basic uh, portrait photograph that I took, and that could, you know, it's, it was a nice shot, had nice warm uh, colors, but it can uh, use a little improvement. Uh, all I've done to this image so far is, as you can see, I removed blemishes. So I've just done some basic retouching. Now I'm going to go through and perform some enhancements. I'm going to go ahead and forego doing the uh, eye and teeth whitening that I showed you guys with the hue saturation already. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the other techniques without that. Each of these is going to use blending modes. Now, eyes are terribly important when it comes to portrait composition. The eyes absolutely must pop. Uh, so I have a few uh, eye techniques, and these are actually from a book written by a gentleman named Chris Orwig, who's fantastic, and I uh, encourage each of you to look up uh, some of his work. In fact, you can see some of these demos uh, done similarly to this, uh, I think, on YouTube, uh, if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go through a few of them. It's a, there's a few techniques here that we're going to get, and they all have to do with blending modes, so they're great practical applications. Uh, let's start with uh, this uh, technique that he has for brightening eyes. And for each of these, I'm going to use the quick mask. So I'm going to press B to get my brush, Q to get my quick mask, and then decrease the size of my brush with the bracket key. And I'm just I'm just selecting just the eyes. Okay, and I'm not going to be real careful about this. So I've selected the eyes. Exit quick mask. Remember the quick mask actually gives you everything but what you painted, so I have to control shift I to invert the selection. And now I'm going to duplicate the information that I have selected onto a new layer. So press Control J, and you can see now I have a new layer. You can't see it, but uh, right there are the eyes, and that's what you always want to layer. I'm going to do eyes brighten. It's good to name your layers. Uh, I'm making copies because I want to edit non-destructively. Uh, I have the original information to this image right here. This background layer is the original layer. This layer here is my uh, retouch layer, my basic blemish retouch layer. So all I've done is just removed some of the blemishes. And then this is going to be the eyes brighten layer. And what I'm going to do on this is I want to brighten the eyes. I'm going to use the screen blending mode. The screen blending mode in the lighten group is going to lighten. Now at first it's going to look pretty terrible, <laughs> but I'm going to play with the opacity and knock it back so that I'm just brightening them up a bit. Now that's probably still too much, so knocking back the opacity so that it's not affecting quite as much, so I'm brightening up the eyes. Now I'm going to use a lot of these in conjunction with each other, so in, in many cases it's a good idea to go back and play with the opacity after you've actually completed the adjustments you've made. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and perform another adjustment that's also to the same information in the eyes. I want to add some contrast to the eyes. I really want the eyes to pop. I want them to be bright and I want them to pop. So I'm going to duplicate that eyes brighten again, control J. It went ahead and lightened them again, lightened them again because the screen was going to be applied to that, so uh, that's why it lightened it. Uh, this time I'm going to use soft light. And soft light is going to give us more contrast when we apply this blending mode to a layer. Now basically what happens with soft light is that everything that is above 50% gray, or excuse me, brighter than 50% gray, is going to get brightened. And everything darker, that's darker than 50% gray is going to get darkened. So that's how it is adding contrast to an image. So I'm going to click on soft light, and you can see that it added contrast. Some of the areas are darker, darker, some of the areas got a little lighter, and of course if I really want to see how dramatic it can be, I can just really, I can <laughs> go all the way up to 100% or actually 99% in this case, 
Let me see what happens there. Now, I don't really want it to be up to 100%. I'm actually going to knock it back. Let's see here. Let just kind of go back and forth. So lighten up a little bit and bring some of that contrast back. Lighten, add contrast. Yeah, it's looking pretty decent. And then I just like to alt and click the visibility icon on the background layer so I can see what I've done. It's pretty good. Uh, it, I did lose a little bit of the green, and you have to be careful about that. And if I were in a situation where I was going to go through a complete retouch, I might actually play with the hue saturation of the eyes to make sure that I don't lose her green because she has hazel eyes, and I am getting a little bit brown now. But you get the picture there. Always want to work subtly. Uh, another eye sharpening technique, and I love this technique. Uh, this is actually, I'm going to show you how to use soft light again, and I'm going to show you how to use a filter that I typically don't encourage people to use. I'm going to go back to the background copy. I'm going to press Control minus to zoom out a little bit, and I want to make a copy pretty much of all the eye information here. So select Control J to duplicate that information. It's going to be, I'm going to call it Eyes Sharpen. I don't call, actually, I need to change um, this up here. I'm going to call this one. Oh, cancel. Got to get the name. Eyes. Uh, this is Iris Contrast. Okay, because the information is very small and I want to be able to keep track of what it is that I'm doing for later on. Now on this eyes sharpen layer, I'm going to use what's called a high pass filter. And it's under filter, other, and then high pass. And yes, that looks weird. Uh, but we're going to make it look less weird. Uh, now what I want to do here is I want this to look just kind of slightly embossed. So I'm going to decrease the pixel radius until I can barely see any color in this. Okay, I just want it to look kind of slightly embossed. And I don't see much color anymore, just a little bit right around the uh, pupil. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to actually desaturate that. I just want that to be black and white information, nothing more. So I'm going to go to uh, Image Adjustment Desaturate, which really gets rid of the color information there. And now I'm going to apply a soft light blending mode. Okay, now let's take a look at the difference there. You see what's going on there? See how much that sharpens those eyes up? Really makes the eyelashes define, the line of her eyes define really makes the eyes pop a lot more. Now there is some, uh, some something going on here that is not so fantastic and that's the grain in the skin. You see that becomes more present as well. So what I usually do after I'm done applying that effect is I just go back and I erase the information I don't need. And you can actually get rid of all the other layer uh, visibility and just get rid of everything you don't need because really all we're interested in is the information around the eye. Now I also have used this for hair and so um, what am I, let me show you here what I mean by hair. Uh, this technique is also really fantastic for hair. So let's look and see what happens there. Look particularly right here. So that really makes the eye, the highlights of the hair uh, sh uh, pop. That's what I'm looking at there. So I actually sometimes will actually perform the same adjustment, but I do it just for the hair. But since I'm, I've just done the eyes, I'm going to erase that extra information on the hair because it's, it's not really needed right now. And it would look weird if someone did notice it. Okay. <clears throat> so again, kind of do a before and after here. Boy, this would be really dramatic if I had clean those eyes up a little bit beforehand, but I'll let you guys take a look at that. Alright, next uh, we're going to go to uh, the darken eye edges technique. Now this is really slick. Now um, again, all about the eyes. Eyes are terribly important. Uh, now let's look at what I'm talking about here. Increasing the edges of the eyes. You see how she has nice dark 
lines at the edge of her eyes. Uh, this is a really important feature to eyes as well. Now, not everybody has this. So I'm going to show you two things really quickly here. I'm going to show you how you can enhance it when someone does have it, and then I'll show you what you can do if someone really doesn't have that. Because some people with very light colored eyes, there just isn't that dark information there. So I'm going to go to the background copy, because that's where I have some pixel information. I'm going to get my brush with B on the keyboard and quick mask with Q on the keyboard and now I'm going to decrease the size of my brush. I want it really thin because all I'm going to get is just the edge here of the eye. Go back over here, same information but on the other eye. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate, oh excuse me, leave the quick mask, invert the selection that was Q and Control Shift I. And now I'm going to duplicate that information by pressing Control J. And now let's do I Edge Darken. And I'm going to use the soft light blending mode again. You can see how it gets much darker, too dark actually. So we're going to back out. Capacity fairly significantly. Now, her the edges of her eyes were already pretty dark, but you can see that that really adds a lot of interest, and it pops again before, after. Really, a lot of pop in those eyes. Now, you, make sure that you zoom in and out like you are right here. Well, I got you. See how I'm working here? Oop. Of course, it can, if I get the right keystrokes, that is important. Control I, or excuse me, Control plus and minus. Uh, I back in and out a lot because sometimes you're gonna you make a, an, an adjustment and you're really tight and you're really not entirely sure what it's gonna look like until you back up and look. So uh, use that technique a lot. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me take a step back. How to do that if someone doesn't have that information? You simply use the same technique, but instead of creating a selection of this information, copying and pasting it, just create a new layer. And I'll do I edge with no info. And you would just simply paint. I'm going to grab my brush with black. I'm going to paint. That looks horrible right now, but it'll look better in a moment. Okay, now. Turn that to a soft light blending mode and decrease the opacity significantly. You can see it just darkens. And of course, if she didn't have any information in there, you make it more uh, <clears throat> dramatic. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that one and go back with this one. I like that one better. Okay, uh, eyelash density is something else that we can add for folks. Now, eyelash density is going to be the same kind of technique that I just showed you with doing, adding the eye edge without information. I don't need to talk to Tyler Dukes right now. Uh, so I'm just going to add a new layer. I'll call it eyelash density. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to show you another little trick that you saw in the book elsewhere, but probably didn't really understand what you could use with it. Now, if you have a Wacom tablet, this is really easy. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over the eyelashes so that I can make them, you know, darker with the blending modes. But of course, that looks horrible because eyelashes don't do that. They're not the same width. They uh, get thinner as they move out toward the edge. If you have a Wacom tablet, you can simply put your mouse down and flick. And as the pen comes up, the line will thin. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, you have options. We can grab that brushes panel that we talked about just recently, and we can play with the shape dynamics. We have under size jitter, and you should have seen this, a uh, feature called fade. This was in one of the chapters, and you can see that it shows, it says fade control 25%, or it's 25. It says that's how much it's going to decrease. So, and you can see what happens here. It actually thins out. So now I can go back 
decrease the size of my brush maybe a little bit, and you can see what happens. Brush fades. Now this looks pretty unnatural now because you know I'm just getting started, but I am going to play with the opacity. And you can see I'm just basically working with the eyelashes she has. Now I can add eyelash information if I'd like. Okay. And again, we want to be subtle, so I'm going to show you guys how you can. That's probably going to be too much, but we'll give it a try. Let's see, I'm going to go to soft light now, and that softens the effect quite a bit. I'm also going to decrease the opacity. Okay, now if I back out, one eye to the next. Uh, I may have gone a little bit too far, but of course you can play with that, make it a little bit more appropriate, but you can see the difference between the two eyes. And if I de increase and decrease, you can see it. Now you can knock that back a bit further if you think that's too much. So anytime that you feel like any of these effects are simply too much, play with the opacity of the layer. But again, I gave her more illustrious looking lashes. Okay. All right, and let's see. I believe I have two more for you. One of them, ah, lip enhancement. Forgot about this one. This is a good one. And my video is getting really long now. I thanks for bearing with me. Uh, I'm going to go back to the background copy, and I'm going to get I'm zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to grab my brush and my quick mask. Increase the size of my brush, and I'm just going to paint the lips. Oh, I got that brush fade on, so just turn it off for now. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of paint the lips. Again, all about the blending modes today. Okay. Doesn't have to be super accurate because we can feather it if we need to. Exit the quick mask by pressing Q. Invert the selection, pressing I, Control Shift I, and then I'm just simply going to increase the color. I'm going to use Multiply. At first, it's going to look horrid. Oop! You know what? I did something wrong, didn't I? Edit, undo. I didn't duplicate my layer. Control J. There we go. Lips. Go to multiply on that layer. It looks horrendous, but back that opacity. Now it's just gives her some more co Ooh, wrong one layer. It just gives her more color. Okay. <clears throat> so again, kind of do it before and after. Looking pretty nice. Not too bad. And the eyes should be pretty subtle. We want the eyes to be subtle. Okay, and then the last thing. Oh, yes. Enhancing the face. Uh, this soft light technique, there are just so many cool things that we can do with this. We can use the soft light technique to add dimension and then just to lighten and darken areas really easily. Uh, and this works with just about any kind of image. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer at the top of the hierarchy and it's going to be for painting soft light. Uh, I'm going to do this in a different way than I usually do because uh, there's some options that can come along with it if you actually get your layer through the layer menu. I'm going to go to new, whoop, whoop, new layer, <laughs> and in this dialog I can actually tell it that I want to have a blending mode of soft light, and when I do that, you see how this option fill with soft light neutral color comes up? Click on that, click OK. Now, nothing happened because it filled with gray, as you can see over here. And if it's gray, 50% gray, absolutely nothing happens with the soft light filter. It's not until we add darkness and lightness that things begin to happen. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and darken up the background a little bit. I'm going to try and give a little dimension to her face, just a little bit more than we already have. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard, increase the size of my brush, I'm going to make sure it's nice and soft, so shift and open bracket, it's soft. And now I'm going to start to paint. Now at first it is going to go haywire. It's going to look awful, but then we're going to fix it, okay? I'm not going to worry too much about how dark it is, because I'm going to fix it later. So I'm just going to try and 
create like kind of a faux vignette. Now I want to try and add a little bit of darkness, a little dimension in areas. And then whoop, I'm actually going to put some highlights on her cheeks and forehead a little bit. So decrease. I'm going to press X on the keyboard and watch what happens to my colors over here. Whoop, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Not sure what happened there, but it, now it's working. So I can toggle my foreground and background color. So I'm going to paint some white. It looks horrendous. I know. It's going to get better. Okay, now let's look <laughs> just at that layer. It's kind of funny what happens here. That's what we have. That looks awful. I'm gonna, there you go. But I'm going to fix that. I'm going to blur it. I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Blur. I'm going to grab a Gaussian Blur, and I am going to blur the bejeebers out of it. Keep going. There we go, until I can't see edges anymore. It's real subtle. Okay. And I can even zoom out, and I can see what I'm doing here. Keep going. There we go. Because I want it to be pretty subtle. Okay. Now I can play with the opacity of that. So now it's just darkening up, adding some dramatic shadows and highlights. I can even go a little further down than that. And there we have it. The longest video so far this semester, 20 some minutes. But we've gone through some great techniques that we can take advantage of with blending modes.